Hey, what's up everybody? I'm here again with another Nitro Blast tutorial. In this one, we're gonna go over our cuts object. And this one is really good if you wanna customize the way that your fracture is happening. So let's go ahead and take our cube and let's go ahead and make 50 pieces and do a regular old fracture. Now this one right here is the cuts object and if you click it, it's gonna add this cuts thing. Now you need to know how to use this guy properly. Uh, for it to work, you have to twirl down your Nitro Blast cube and take this cuts and put it at the bottom of there. And now the cuts needs an object to reference to know how to cut this cube differently. So you can put anything in here. You can put a spline, you can put an object. Let's go ahead and put a cube in here and uh, let's go ahead and make this cube really, really skinny. And we'll go ahead and drag this guy into our Nitro Blast cuts. So this cuts is going to take the parameters of this cube and it's going to cut slices uh, based on where it is. So this cuts tag right here, uh, right now the mode's volume. We have a bunch of different ways it could cut. And then we have number of pieces. So let's crank that way up. And then let's go back to our Nitro Blast cube and hit fracture again. Now you're going to notice that we got all these strange looking cuts. And the really cool thing about this is it's a great way to customize how your fractures look so that they don't all look the same. Um, so yeah, we can take this guy and then you can duplicate it and put it in that same cuts object. Maybe move one over here and rotate it a little bit. And uh, then we go back to our object and fracture again. And you'll notice that we get the cuts over here, which is pretty cool. So it's really just a way to specify exactly where in your object you would like different slices. Um, one thing that uh, the guy who made this, his name is Lazarus, and uh, one thing that he showed in one of his tutorials, which was really cool, is he put a sphere in here. And then what he did was he took the sphere tag and made like 100 pieces. Then he went back and fractured it. Actually, there's a little button on here called keep pieces. And that's kind of what he was talking about. So let's try uh, hitting keep pieces on here. And then we'll fracture it. And you notice that we have kind of that fracture around where that sphere was. Well, if we click on this, everything's falling down. What if we want just the ones in the middle to fall down? So then we can take our sphere and duplicate it. And we'll take the second sphere and we'll make it a little bit bigger. And uh, let's go to the first one, make it a bit smaller. And on that first one, we'll make it more like 180 something. And then on this one, let's uncheck keep pieces. And then we'll go back up to the top and fracture it and see if this actually works. So hit play. And now you can kind of see that um, not the whole thing's falling now, but uh, just the ones that are specified right here. So let's go ahead and try uh, maybe making these guys a tiny bit smaller. Maybe make the second one a bit bigger. And let's try making some more cuts on this guy and some more on this one. Just see what happens. And we'll go back to our top guy and hit fracture. See what's up. All right, now let's hit play. There you go. So now you're kind of being able to specify the exact portion that you want to be dynamic and spill out. The cuts definitely has a lot of power. Um, let's do one example that I've used it for uh, in the past. Let's go ahead and delete this guy and make a cube. And we'll go ahead and make it pretty big. Now, if you guys ever want to do sort of an earthquake type animation, what you need to do is be able to figure out a way so that uh, your cuts object will kind of go along a path that you want to fracture, right? To be very specific on where you want it to fracture. The cool thing that uh, Lazarus actually showed is you can, you can use a spline, which is really cool. So if we go to our top view, we'll just kind of do something like this, right? So pretend that's kind of our fault line. So now we can go back to our other uh, view here. And uh, let's go ahead and take our spline and put it into an extrude nerves. Yeah, there you go. So the important thing with a spline is it has to be intersecting uh, the plane, right? So it can't be down here. It has to be intersecting the plane. So there we go. It's intersecting. And we're going to use that as our cuts object. So let's go ahead and take our cube. Let's go ahead and make... Uh, maybe like 75 pieces and fracture that guy. And then we'll go ahead and add our cuts object, open up our Nitro Blast cube, put it in there, and then drag our extruder nerves into there. Now all we can do is go ahead and go to our, uh, go to our tag in here and add a bunch of pieces. So we'll make some extra pieces there, and then let's fracture this guy and see what happens. Okay, so you'll notice that that did not work at all. So the, the thing that you need to do is go back to your tag and change this from vertex to, uh, I think it's surface. Let's try surface. 
go back to our nitroblast cube and hit surface and that yep that's the right one so now we can see that it is splitting exactly where we want it across our fault line all right very cool so now let's go ahead and add a random effector now the way that you add uh, effectors to this nitroblast cube is a little bit different so i want to make sure that i covered that let's go ahead and hit a random effector dump that in here um, if we go ahead and do this just dump the cube into there I'm not entirely sure if that's going to work. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. I think what you have to do instead is take that random effector and actually put it inside of the nitroblast cube along with all these other pieces, right? So now that it's in there, what we have to do is change our uh, deformer from off. We have to turn that to object. And then you'll notice that it jumped a little bit so we know it's working. So then we can go to our, our position and uh, let's go ahead and enable rotation and maybe crank these up just a little bit and then you can see that now we're cooking right we get some pretty cool stuff um yeah so then we can go into our fall off and we'll change this from infinite to box and then we can move our box over to here and then what we can do is just animate the scale of this guy across here and then we can go ahead and tweak our parameters a little bit so that these are kind of rotating and these chunks are kind of coming out of the ground and uh, yeah, that looks pretty cool. So then all we would have to do is, you know, just animate this guy across here. And then you would have a pretty nice uh, kind of a simulation of the ground splitting open. And all of that really comes down to the fact that you can use cuts to really specify um, exactly where you want things to fracture apart. So definitely a handy tool. And uh, I hope you have fun with it. Thanks, guys. And we'll talk again soon. Bye, everybody.